I always wanted to have our own house. When I met John, he was the first foreigner I ever met in my life. He was working for the Associated Press. He was a foreign correspondent. He was writing a lot about Japan and about China. One day, we heard that old farmhouse was about to be destroyed. When we got there, it's like being sent by a time machine back to 18th century. John and I fell in love with the farmhouse at the first sight. Japanese farmhouses are dark. Gradually, you can start seeing. I had never seen cross beams like that. Wow, very spacious and very high ceiling. This is great, I thought. It's just the instinct. Aroma of this house was beautiful. Smell of the earth, smell of the wood, smell of the smoke a little bit. I felt life very healthy life being led in that space. I think we should get this farmhouse and transport it to somewhere and we can build our own home. No. When I look at these photographs, it definitely it's not yesterday. It's, it's long ago. In the beginning, I said, let's talk for two days Japanese and two days English. As we get excited, we always ended up in, in talking English. <laughs> this is an um, old AP office. He started to work here since 1959. And uh, he had a little mustache, and he always enjoyed good cigar. He didn't know uh, much about the countryside of Japan. So I took him to Gifu, where my family is. He became like a member of our family, and he uh, adopted me as his son. We got the house, but no land. So we looked, looked, and looked. It was either too far away for him to commute to AP office in Tokyo, or too expensive. We came up the hill. We saw this view of the ocean. Breathtaking. We must buy this property. Moving old farmhouse to Kamakura was a big undertaking. This long beam is about 50 feet long, one piece of wood. As we come to the curb, we moved, jiggled, and we gradually, gradually came up here.
John was very popular amongst not only carpenters, but everybody. And he made people always laugh within his limited Japanese. This is a very exciting time. <laughs> You see the formation of uh, roof beams in this form of um, prayer's hands. In Buddhism, we pray like this. When the roof is completed, we celebrate. And the whole idea is to ask God to descend on this new house to protect the house, family, and always with the salt and sake for the sake of this happy house kampai everyone drinks. Every day was a happy occasion. <laughs> We completed the house June of 1967. So 41 years we have been living here. And Minka has a space which is mysterious. People come and they don't leave. We are close to nature in Minka architecture, I think. large posts and beams, and we feel secured. I think this Minka brought him a peace of mind in a way that uh, this is his own home and uh, I'm here. Before coming here, he was ready to go any part of the world at any time when the AP or head office says. As the time went by, I think uh, this Minka made him stay in Tokyo office. He settled here. Can you see? John loved people and story. <laughs> Stories about them. <laughs> so this is a perfect place for for um, for John to interview people, <laughs> both private or public or whatever. Mm. He always liked red wine, big bottle. We consumed sometimes many, many empty bottles. <laughs> oh, gosh. Shimobashira kori no hari yuki no keta sasu mune kakete mizu taruki kana. It's a short poem wishing the house doesn't catch fire. Good day of June, 1734. When I did uh, this um, John's Minka, 
I was not thinking of becoming an architect yet at that time. Later, I got clients for this type of architecture. When I see really good houses, and if I fall in love with this Mika, I get this house dismantled and store it in my storage for someone who might say, I need a Mika. Over here is my graveyard. Uh, not my, but Minka's graveyard for Minkers. One day they will turn into the earth. The world of wood, when they are standing and when they are standing again as a house and lying here to be buried. Like many things, there's always end of life and they have just about to finish it. This is an important photograph. I took, as I said, the farewell, goodbye to John. And I always thought he was smiling at me. But when I enlarged this photo, and when I looked at him, this, him very carefully, I could see in his eyes something much deeper. Every time I come here to this room, I, I greet him. And I say, Ittekimasu. I'm here, back at home. 